Hello and welcome to Revit Beginner Program. Today and the next few episodes, we are going to talk about massing. And before we start understanding the features of how to use massing in Revit, we must really understand why do we need massing. Now, if you're an architect or a master planner, you may have already heard about block models. You may already have created a few block models. Now, block models were created mainly to analyze the building volumes and study and experiment on building forms. If you are a master planner, you may have created a block model to study the collective impact of different building volumes on your master plan. Now, all of these kind of analysis doesn't happen physically now, but instead that happens virtually on a digital screen, on a digital model. So in Revit environment, in order to do such kind of analysis on a building form or to generate an interesting building form by experimenting, massing is the key. Massing is the tool that you need to use. So in today's episode, we are going to focus on some basic ideas about how to create a basic form and then try to experiment with that form. And once you are done with your experiment, how do you convert real life building elements on that form? In the next few episodes, we are going to talk further about on this topic. So please make sure that you have subscribed. And on that note, let's begin. Okay, so I have started a new project. And under massing and sight, you have a tool called conceptual mass here. Now, before we start creating a mass, you must really switch on the visibility of the mass. You can switch it on from here. And the other option is that you can go into the visibility graphics and under mass, you can override this visibility from here. If you're overriding it here, this and this may not work in its coordination. So make sure that you're using either one of them. I'm going to use this button here. So I switched on the visibility of my mass and I have two options of creating a mass. One is in place mass and one is load the family of mass. If you have a family of a mass or if you want like to create one, you can go into file, new family and under conceptual mass, you have the option of creating a mass family. Now, if you have this mass, you can load it and place it here or you can create an in place mass right here inside the project. Today in this video tutorial, we are going to talk about in-place mass. So I'm going to start this in-place mass, give it a name, test one. And here you have a very familiar draw panel here, so you can use any one of the shapes. I'm going to start working with rectangle and I'm going to create a rectangle, a random size. And I'm going to go near the rectangle and you'll see how the mass actually detects itself as a polyline. So because this is a closed loop, it already starts intuitively to understand that it's a closed polyline. But if you would like to change the size of your rectangle, you can always come back to the line, press tab, select it and change its values. Let's say I want to make this about five meters in length and go ahead near this edge, press tab. And now you have six meters of width. So I have about five meter by six meters of rectangle. Now I can select this rectangle and I have an option of either creating a solid form or a void form. I'm going to start creating a solid form. Once you do this, it by default create a um, cuboid. Now this is about two meters of height. I can always come here and change it to 4,000 or I can use this gizmo to change the surface height in Z direction or move its position in X or Y direction. Now this is an interesting tool because this gizmo allows you to experiment with your form. Let's say I'm going to select one of these surfaces and push and pull this. You can also do that with any other surfaces. Press tab to select the surface and push and pull in different directions. Not only the same perpendicular direction, but also let's say I want to move this in X direction here. How we can start experimenting with our cuboid form. Not only with surfaces, but also the edges. You can also move the edges in any direction that you like. I'm going to move this particular edge a little bit higher and this particular points in a little bit down. So surfaces, edges and points. These are the different things you can use to experiment with your form. Let's say, for example, I would like to create a void in the middle of this surface. I can come back here and choose a circle. And instead of drawing on a work plane, I can draw on a face of a mask. So you can see how it is detecting different faces and where you can draw. 
And I'm going to select this and instead of creating a solid form, I'm going to create a void form in this case. Whenever you are um, extruding a circle, it asks you whether you want a cylindrical form or a spherical one. So if you select a cylindrical form here, it's going to create a cylindrical volume. Or if you select a um, spherical uh, structure, it's going to create a spherical uh, void like this. I'm going to have selected a spherical one and you can see how it has created a void here. Now you can keep on experimenting on this or you can add more elements to it. I'm going to go ahead and finish the mass right now. So let's move on with the mass. Now I have ex finished experimenting with my form and I would like to convert now this form into my Revit elements like walls, roofs, curtain systems, floors and so on. So when you go into the massing inside, you have option of modeling by face. Now these are very interesting features which allows you to convert these surfaces, these faces of your mass into the building elements. Let's start with wall. And I'm going to go ahead and select, let's say a brick wall. And I'm going to justify its location line to finish face interior maybe. So the face is going to match with the interior face of my wall. And I'm going to simply go ahead and select. Simply go ahead and select the face and you'll see how it adapts to the shape of my mass. It already created a void for the area that I have created a void form. Um, let's say I want to create a um, glass wall around the spherical part that goes inside. How do we do this? Let's go ahead and choose the curtain system. And it also works very simply just the way we uh, created a wall by face, we can create a garden system by face. I'm going to select this particular face and I'm going to choose create system. You can select this garden system, change the number of um, grids that you want, let's say I want about 10 by 10. And you see the uh, more divisions of the glass, the better the curvature becomes. You can always go into the edit type, duplicate and create further different kinds of layouts or add mullions to your walls. So we talked about how to work with garden systems in one of my previous videos. I'm going to give you the link in the description box. For now, I'm just going to work with um, the default settings. So here we have a beautiful garden system available here. Now let's try to add a few other elements. Let's go ahead and add a roof. Now I'm going to create one of the roofs like this here. Select the face and create roof. And here we go. Now in case if you go back to your mass, let's say I'm going to go back and select my mass here and I'm going to edit in place my mass. If there is going to be any changes to your mass, Let's increase the height a little bit or let's make it a little bit less or big and maybe let's experiment a little bit here and I'm going to finish my mass here. Now a lot of things have changed. I always come back to my elements and ask them to update to face. Let's go ahead and update to face so you'll see how my building elements kind of update to the updated mass. So you can always have keep that connection between the mass and the building element. You can also, let's also update to face the roof. And here we are. So let's go back to the level plan, maybe cut a section through this here, where you can see what's happening in your building. Now here we have two levels available to us. And let's say I want to have an uh, intermediate floor here. Maybe I also want another floor. Maybe I add one more level at about level two. So I want two floors to be added at level one and level two in my building. Now level two is almost very close to the roof. So I'm going to decrease that to about six meters. There we are. Now let me isolate. Now let me switch off my walls in order to see my mass very clearly. Now I can go into massing inside and select my floor, but the problem is I really don't have any surfaces at level one and level two to convert them into a floor. So what do I do here? So in order to create a floor by face, first we need a face. So I'm going to select my mass 
and go ahead and choose mask floors. So this tool allows you to create faces at levels that you select. So I'm going to select level one and level two. So here we are, we created a surface that I can select. Now I can go into floor, select the type of floor that I want, select the surfaces and create floor. There we are. Let's switch on the visibility graphics for the walls and we have a complete building available to us. Let me hide one of the walls here to see what's happening inside. You can always switch on and off your mass visibility in order to see the building elements more clearly. So today we learned about how to create a mass in place mass and experiment with its form. Once you have experimented and you're happy with this form, you can convert those faces into current system, roof, wall, or floor. Now in next episode, we are going to talk about how to create different forms of mass. Today we learned about one method of creating a mass, mass by extrusion. But there are also many different ways in which you can experiment and create different shapes while working with massing. So next episode is going to be about how to create different shapes in massing. So please make sure that you subscribe. Stay tuned. I'll see you in the next one.